Hi, I'm Allison K. Hymas, and I'm the author of The Explorer's Code, a new book about three kids who solve a mystery in a spooky old house by working together to solve codes and puzzles. Let's learn about codes and ciphers and have some fun. Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about a simple cipher, a good one to start with, and to practice your coding and decoding abilities with. This simple cipher is our good friend A1Z26. So A1Z26 got its name from the way that it substitutes numbers for letters. So in this case, A equals 1, Z equals 2, and so on, until you finally get to Z equals 26. Therefore, the sentence, I am a coding machine, would look something like this. So, as you can see, the numbers replace the letters, and hyphens are used to show strings of numbers that make up words. So I becomes a 9, but the word am becomes 1 hyphen 13, using the first letter in the alphabet, A equals 1, and then the 13th, M equals 13. It's a very simple cipher, and it's a good example of a type of cipher called a substitution cipher. Substitution ciphers are named because they will substitute a letter, a number, or a symbol in place of the plain text letter. So, in a substitution cipher, the words themselves are not rearranged in any way, uh, but the alphabet used has been altered. You can see that here, the alphabet in this case is now a series of numbers as opposed to a normal A to Z alphabet. So, substitution ciphers are some of the most commonly used ciphers throughout history. The Babington plot, the one that I mentioned in my last video, the failed conspiracy to assassinate Queen Elizabeth I of England, used a substitution cipher. One of the most famous ciphers in history, the Caesar cipher, which we'll get to later, is also a substitution cipher. Substitution ciphers are easy to create, and if you have the key, they're very easy to decode. They can be tricky to decode also, which is another pro on their side, depending on the type if you don't have the key. So you might be able to tell that the A1Z26 cipher is a pretty simple cipher. Um, it's pretty easy to break. If you see a bunch of numbers and you decide to try A for 1, B for 2, etc., it's pretty easy to break. Um, therefore, it's very easy to write. It's very easy for your intended reader to solve, but it's also easier for other people to solve the to solve this. Um, it might not keep your secret safe from a determined reader. Um, that said, one of the best things about a substitution cipher is that you decide what number or symbol in the cipher text relates to the plain text letter. So no one says you have to use A equals 1 and Z equals 26. That is the most common form, that is the most recognizable form of this, this code. However, if you decide that A equals 3 and B equals 4, you can do that. That might make it a little easier to hide your secrets from a reader that you don't want to read your notes. Um, of course, you always need to make sure that your recipient, the intended reader, has the right key. They know exactly which words or which letters and which numbers you've substituted. So, give it a try. Practice substituting numbers for letters with the, with the basic A1Z26 and then why not try something new? See if you can stump your friends or your parents and um, see if you can come up with a version of this cipher that is that works well for you and is one that your, your reader can get, even if you keep it secret from other people. All right, next video, we're going to talk about another substitution cipher with a history as old as the Bible. Stay tuned, or in other words, 1921-25, 20, 21-14-5-4.